Shout out to my guy Flavio over at Flavio Moto is out of Brazil for this cool hat. Make sure y'all check out his Instagram. The information for his Instagram will actually be linked in the description box below. We shake it with the Dirty Left Shoe crew, Roll King Sino here bringing you another quick episode of the Dirty Left Shoe Chronicles. This is actually going to be a video for two of my subscribers, Will Maddock and Mr. D. Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is the pros and cons of riding on an extended swing arm. I know it's a lot of myths out there, it's also a lot of things that people say along the lines of, oh, okay, uh, you can't corner, you can't do this, you can't do that. So today, we're going to go over the things that you can do and the things that you can't do. We got this great bike donated today to us from the one and only La Taliana. So for me, I've owned several bikes. I've owned stretch bikes. I've owned stock wheelbase bikes. And the reality is every bike that I've owned, whether it be stretch or whether it be stock wheelbase, have been for a particular purpose. So before we go any further, I think what we should do is go ahead and discuss the reason someone would go ahead and stretch a bike in the first place. It could actually only be one or two reasons. One, your first reason that someone would ride a stretch bike would be if they're actually drag racing competition whether they're doing it for a hobby even if they're actually doing it in the street that's the only reason that they would actually utilize an extended swing arm for the purpose of drag racing outside of that the only other reason is looks that's the reality of it um when you got a bike stretched out beyond the normal length beyond the stock wheelbase it has more of an aggressive look an aggressive stance to an extent so in sense to some people they desire that look of their bike more than that stock standard look that everyone goes around with when they first buy a bike. So for this particular bike, this particular bike is actually set up for the strip, but it's also set up for the street. And what I mean by that, it is, it is lowered and stretched, but it's lowered and stretched to the point to where it's still, you're still capable of riding it in the street. For y'all who don't know, this is a fully extended swing arm, um, fully custom made swing arm. This is the type of swing arm that actually comes on its stock. If you can get a good picture of that, that's a stock wheelbase swing arm. If I go right here to the pivot axle of the swing arm, you can see pretty much the stock wheel would be about in this range. That center, that center rear axle will have that stock wheel center axle sitting about right here. So that's a pretty decent length stretch on there. It's also other ways that you can actually extend your motorcycle without removing your stock swing arm. And that's with swing arm extensions, which I'm sure most have heard of. So let's go over some of the pros of actually riding a stretch bike. The main pro of riding a stretch bike is that your bike's not going to wheelie nearly as much as it would if you were riding a stock wheelbase bike. That's pretty much almost common sense. You'll keep that bike, that front wheel planted on the ground a lot more um which kind of rolls into another point of a pro to riding a stretch bike is you can actually leave harder on your bike and what i mean by that is if you ever pulled up to a light or something like that with a buddy of yours next to you and y'all kind of doing a light to light race or something and y'all sitting there waiting for the light to turn green and you ready to slide your clutch if you ever slid that clutch a little bit too hard i guess you could say it gave it a little bit too much gas slid the clutch a little bit too quick, so to speak, and you seen that person or you yourself shot up in the air, that was probably because your bike was sitting in a stock wheelbase and you really didn't have that, that throttle uh, clutch ability yet. A stretch bike, I actually eliminate a good amount of that. Now, if you on there and you trying to leave, and you, let's say you on a sticky road or you're in a road with a lot of, uh, it's, it's able to really grip, you know, hot day out. It still might come up on you depending on how long your stretch is now. A lot of it is going to depend on that. But for the most part, generally speaking, you can leave a lot harder on your bike with the stretch bike versus a stock wheelbase bike. For another pro, you actually feel a lot more planted to the ground. So the stretch bike in combination with it being lowered actually makes you feel a lot more planted and stable than it would as if you were sitting up versus if you were sitting up. 
um, a stock wheelbase and your bike was sitting at stock height. The final pro would be that I have for you would be that it makes your bike look a lot more aggressive to me. Um, it's personal preference. Some people don't like the look of an extended swing arm. Some people love the look of an extended swing arm. So it's personal preference. To me, I believe the stance of the bike has a lot to do with it. All of this again depends on your length and it depends on how far you lower your bike. And another thing when people do lower their bikes um, is making sure that the level of it is even. Sometimes a person will lower their bike, they'll put an extended swing arm on their bike and they'll actually just lower it from the front or they'll lower it from the back. So then they have a bike that's sitting with the back end down and the front end up. Or they'll have a bike that's sitting too much with the front end down, with the front nose down and the back end up. So that's very important that you try and keep that level. And what I mean by that, not as far as height, but whatever your height is, if I lower the front uh, two inches, I wanna make sure I lower that back that same amount, okay? If I lower that back, an inch and a half. I want to make sure I lower that front the same amount. That brings us to the cons. The cons of riding a stretch bike. The biggest con that it is to actually ride a stretch bike is lack of maneuverability. The bike logically is not going to move as it would as you know as it would as a stock wheelbase bike. It'll still maneuver pretty good. It'll, it'll maneuver, I'll tell you, it'll maneuver a lot better than most people think, but it all depends on how your setup is, your length of your swing arm and the way that you lower it. Con number two, lack of lean angle a lot of people think that oh well you got extended swing arm oh you can't take corners reality is you can take corners with the extended swing arm depending again on how long or short that arm is but the big factor of taking a corner is actually how low your bike is okay the lower your bike the less the lean think about it the lower your bike, the less the lean. If I had this bike slammed completely on the ground, I can't lean but so far over before I'm actually gonna hit those foot pegs, before I'm actually gonna actually hit the engine case, any of that. It's just not gonna lean the way that it would versus it being at stock wheelbase. Even if I took this extended swing arm and I actually set this bike up at stock height, instead of it being lowered, this bike would lean a lot better than it would if it was stock wheelbase and slammed all the way to the ground. So that's a big misconception. A lot of people think that you can't lean on a stretch bike. You can lean on a stretch bike to an extent. The determining factor of not being able to lean is you can't hit that angle because of how low the bike is. Uh, nevertheless, again, that's a con because most of the time when you have a stretch swing arm, it goes hand in hand with lowering your bike. So if I got a stretch swing arm and I'm lowering my bike, of course, I'm gonna lose lane angle. Brings me to something else as far as the length of the swing arm and of the stretch, which most people I know they're gonna say, oh man, you know I need all the power I can get and this, that, and the third, but the longer the swing arm, the more horsepower you lose. A lot of people don't realize that. You hear a lot of people that's giving out horsepower numbers. Oh man, my bike is making, you know, 200, it's making 198, it's it made 205, it made 210, or, you know, the bike comes with, with 200 plus horsepower. A lot of people don't realize when you're reading them brochures and when you're reading them magazines and what you see online, those initial horsepower numbers for these bikes are the horsepower to the crank. It's not horsepower to the rear wheel. That's something different. That crank produces a certain amount of horsepower. It then has to transfer that horsepower and torque to the rear wheel. So it's got a ways to go to get to that rear wheel. So think about it like this. Let's say a, a bike is actually making 180, 185, 190 horsepower to the rear wheel, okay? Stock. When you extend a swing arm, let's say if I extend a swing arm 10, 12 inches over the stock length, I'm adding that much more chain it has to rotate that much more with weight. So logically speaking, that engine is not gonna produce the type of power that it produced at a stock wheelbase or at the crank, of course. Uh, you will lose horsepower. Will you notice it? Depends on the person. The average person riding up and down the street who they don't partake in any type of road racing, any type of drag racing, they probably won't notice horsepower loss unless they you know, got a, a, a smaller bike, or let's say even a bigger bike with a gangster stretch on it. I mean, 15, 20, 20 uh, inch stretch over stock. They might notice it then. It's a lot of ways you can offset 
that horsepower loss with gearing or sprocket work, you know, changing out your sprockets. But that's a whole nother video. I won't touch on that now. Another con, which is pretty general, is an extended swing arm might actually limit how you go about towing your bike, whether it be on a truck or whether it be on a trailer. So make sure you know the length of your bike so you don't get stuck basically with your pants down, not knowing that, oh, okay, I got my extended bike, uh, it's, it's extended 15 inches over or extended, you know what I mean, uh, 12 inches over, and it's not gonna fit on the back of my truck with the lift gate up or with the tailgate up. And the final con that I got for y'all, and it's funny because it was actually one of the pros too, but again, it's for some people and not for some people, but the bike don't willy, you know what I mean? By the bike not willing, you know, you can't have fun like you would be able to on a, on a stock wheelbase bike. So don't expect to get the swing arm and, and put it on there and be able to do the type of wheelies on a bike that you would do with a stock wheelbase setup. Now, don't get me wrong. I have seen drift bikes set up uh, where they don't have them slammed in the back and things like that. And these are people who had these bikes set up for those particular things. So they're able to do it because it's set up for that. So the real question is, should you stretch your bike and the answer to that is going ahead man if you're really serious or you're really curious about stretching your bike i say go ahead and give it a try it's not a whole lot to do depending on how you go about it i would suggest just getting you some uh, swing arm extensions to start out for most bikes they actually make the most popular makes and models they actually make the swing arm extensions and another big thing that a lot of people don't do when they extend their bikes and lower them get that kickstand cut or get you an aftermarket kickstand that's shorter because that's an easy way for your bike to fall over just because it has no lean angle. So what happens is they lower and they stretch their bike or even lower their bike and they have a stock kickstand on there. When they park, their bike is sitting damn near straight up and they wonder why when they're at an event, they hear a whole, people, a whole bunch of people go, oh, because the damn bike them fell. I recommend just keeping that stock swing arm because if you don't like the stretch feel, you can always go back to the stock setup. So guys, I'm gonna end that video that way. So make sure y'all comment, like, subscribe, and share this video. This is a short one for y'all. Again, it was a subscriber's request. Shout out to Mr. D and shout out to Will Maddox. A double shout out to Will Maddox for actually being my 100 subscriber giveaway winner. It's gonna be plenty more to come. Make sure y'all stay tuned and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.